Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Smite Pro League European Edition. My name is Hyres Bart. That's Dry Bear, and we are just moments away from getting into our next game here coming up, Dry Bear. And this one should be a good one. Team Coast versus Team Solo Mid. Both hungry teams. Yeah, they're both looking for the a little bit more wins, honestly. I mean, Coast sitting at the bottom right now, not having a good time, and they're sitting one and five. They played six matches total. They've only won one of them. Look at TMS to TSM. They're in the fifth slot right above Coast in second to last place, and they're two and four. And so both these teams really looking for that big victory. Victory. And given the fact that they're right next to each other, if one of them gets a win, it'll push that other one even lower. So they had that chance to kind of climb the charts here. Uh, now, of course, SK Gaming, after that last loss, are 3 and 4. So if TM TSM wins this, they'll tie. TSM definitely needs this win. Uh, they haven't won it in some time now. And they definitely they are. Need to you know, but they played with SimStar. They've had a sub, which, you know, you can say, okay, look, they lost with their sub one time. Yeah. And they've lost only two other games besides that except for their opening game versus the top team in Europe. You know, you can you can kind of make the excuses for why why these wins haven't been coming to them, but overall, I mean, the numbers don't lie. Statistics, they matter. And 1-4 uh, and four for TSM no, they were just is not what they want to be. They are numbers, but those numbers sometimes matter, especially when it is the win-loss column. I see. That, those are two very important statistics. You want to make sure that one is more than the other, and team play is a way to get there. Uh, but we'll see if TSM can take out Team Coast here. Both of these teams struggling, as we mentioned. So you're exactly right. I mean, you mentioned it there, and I want to reiterate. TSM was able to defeat Mortality earlier this week with a fantastic play from Game Hunter Loki in the solo lane. So look to see if Coast wants to take away that Loki pick from TSM this time around. Looks like they are in full roster, ladies and gentlemen. So if you're a TSM fan, they are at fighting strength right now. They have all five of their starting members getting ready to go. This is not going to be uh, like the match we saw the other day where uh, Zimstar had to stand in there for Trix Tank. So hopefully the, the connectivity is strong this time around, but you can't take away from Coast either. You've got a lot of strong players over there. One thing we've noticed as well is Ninja Bobat seems to be having a troubled time this week as well as Shaggy Shank. Both players not really hitting the same marks we're used to seeing them hit. Well, you know, I think that maybe one of the bigger issues here for these teams has been not so much out of the Hunter role. I think TSM, Game Hunter's play, has been very, very erratic. Hmm. Uh, he's been between really, really top form and doing quite poorly. Uh, Trix Tank's had some rough games as well. They've tried a few things that haven't worked out. Uh, but TSM is going to go ahead and ban out the Aphrodite Raw. On the other side, Coast taking out Mercury Nuwa. And the first pick is going to be Jean Quay. Notably, Yan is still open, as is Geb, which I would expect to be the reply picks from Coast here. Uh, probably Giannis, definitely. Corn, I've been playing a lot of Giannis lately. Uh, does play a lot of Ogni, though. Uh, the Raw and the Aphrodite seem like it's just a targeted ban against Variety. It seems like they just don't want his very strong slow lane healing style to come into play here, uh, much like Maniac from SK that we saw last game. Uh, so it's just a lot of, uh, you know, shut down the solo laner that really scales to the mid game, keeps them alive. But I expect at least a Giannis pick here for Corn, on the side of Kosi is still available. Looks like Roms be hovered on here as well. Shaggy Shank playing an incredible Rom. So that, uh, imagine that would be locked in. Looks like they both are. So now back over to TSM to see if they want to grab that gap or not. Yeah, you know, Ra makes some sense here. Uh, well, not Ra, but I said Ra, um, but they sound so similar. So you don't say the A on, on uh, the Indian pantheon, the Hindu names here, usually. Uh, Bakasura, Ram, Kumbakarn, those types of things. But uh, Ram and Ra sound so similar. But on the side of Team Solomon, and Nemesis is going to be drafted here to go along with her. Jean Quay, no surprise there. It wasn't picked up by Team Coast. Go ahead and snag that and take away the best counter to Jean Quay that is uh, currently in vogue. They're also going to take a Geb on top of that, giving that Nemesis a lot of free reign in the fight to get in and out, especially Ooh. on the side of Coast, though. Serket is available and unbanned at this point. Will they take it in their first three drafts? The thing about this is if they... Both teams can see who they're thinking about. So if they don't the lock in the circuit, it will likely be banned, so they will go ahead and take it. And Coast is going to be throwing a circuit onto the side of Bobat, oh. who has been struggling definitely so far. And a Loki ban coming right after that. I love the choice from Coast. Again, Game Hunter playing a very strong Loki the other day, so I want to shut that down and prevent him from getting that strong late game burst assassin potential. Circuit can be locked in here for Ninja Bobat. Has a lot of implications. Uh, notably, he doesn't really like the assassin style as much. And you see him on Hoon Bots, you see him on Thor, you see him jumping into the fights in the team fight oriented style. Whereas Sir Cat's more, I'm going to try to pick a target and kill them. So we'll see how Ninja Bobat transitions into Sir Cat. He's played here once before and did, you know, it, it, was, it, was, a tough, it was a tough time for Bobat uh, playing Sir Cat the last time we saw him. So we'll see if he's kind of picked up some pace on that one. Well, Shaggy Shank a lot making of one more selection. Yeah, he really has. Bobat has not performed so far in the Sprite Pro League. Up to snuff from what we've seen him be capable of. Nope. He has definitely struggled so far. And, uh, you know, there's so many things that can affect your jungler. Your mid laner could be losing and forced to babysit. Likewise for the solo laner. But in this case, he hasn't had that same impact that we've seen from 
well, him in the past. Bacchus going to be Bacchus. drafted by Team Coast as their support, so no big surprise there. Uh, everyone knows there's going to be a Bacchus or Amir at this point. Maybe a Sobek coming up, but uh, no reason to draft any. Draft him in the last spot can still leave a swing position open for your soul later or mid, depending on where you want to put Giannis. So Coast drafting out the Bacchus. Final two picks from TSM coming out shortly. We're likely to see... The solo lane pickup here for Game Hunter, and uh, notably, Vambana is available. Bacchus actually has a really high win percentage right now, uh, doing very, very well, so it seems to be the character to pick nowadays. We've got On Her on the other side, locked in and ready to go, and Agni locked in as well. Does that mean that Game Hunter is going to be playing a mage, John Quay? into, actually also could be playing Ogni. Now we do know Lobster does have a big uh, fan fiction thought over John Quay as well. He likes playing John Quay, he likes playing that character um, at every stage of the game, and as most mages do, is in the way that, you know, you're very tanky, very durable, you have a good team fight comp, you have good sustain for yourself with the heal from exorcism, you have good slow from exposed evil, so it seems to come together here. Across the way, they're going to lock in Changa here for variety. So, final lineup is completed here for both teams. Uh, a little bit more durable on the side of Team solo mid, but a lot of damage and team fight synergy there on Team Coast. And, well, they do draft Variety, a, uh, a lovely healer in the solo lane for himself, so he's going to be perfectly happy with that Chang'e. And the team for Coast is pretty nasty here. A lot of lockdown between the Bacchus and the Chang'e ultimate in the team fights. Rom doing plenty of damage. Giannis with the shotgun and Sir Ket able to get in and out very, very nicely. On the other side for TSM, Nemesis also able to ex enter and exit these fights at will. The On Her going to be going to smack a lot of raw physical power coming out from him. Uh, the Geb, of course, uh, doing the Geb things, being mobile, having big team fight presence, and being able to save targets right. at will. And uh, the extended fight definitely goes aside of TSM with the Agni Bombs being free. His mana cost will be nice and happy, as well as a Flame Wave doing a lot of dot damage. And, of course, Game Hunter with the ultimate on Jean Quay, able to do tremendous amounts of damage in those fights as well. So uh, if Coast isn't able to find their pickups and find their burst, they're going to have a hard time winning this game. Uh, look for them to take some picks and go into early Gold Furies here with that Rom plus Bacchus combination. Both of them able to do quite a bit of damage. Variety. Uh, it's going to be a bit more mobile than the Zhang Kui, but Zhang Kui with the stronger sure. rotations until about level 15 or so, where that uh, rank 3, rank 4 ultimate comes online for variety. So all things told, it's going to be a uh, sustained stand and fight battle for TSM versus uh, a gank heavy lineup for Team Coast. Well, you're going to see an interesting strategy here. Now, we know Kivo Fred does play a lot of the assassin styles, and Nemesis fits into that just a little bit differently than some of the other characters. We've seen him play Freya to the top level here, but of course, if he picked Freya this time around, it would be a four magical, one physical lineup for TSM, and they have to split that somehow. Sure. So, John Quigley with a solo lane there for Game Hunter. We'll see how he plays onto the tankiest mage in the game currently. Uh, game Hunter generally going for more of the bruiser style, sometimes the uh, assassin late game style, as we do see uh, that low key play. But, you know, as it stands right now, both teams have have a pretty good shot at taking that mid game um, right as the landing phase ends and they go for that first gold fury considering the fact that they have a lot of single target damage on the side of Team Coast. They've got Rom uh, with the Rom ultimate as well able to clear a lot of distance. you got mm -hmm. long distance with the Giannis ultimate and so of course the Ket is going to activate here. I think the biggest thing for Coast is that if they lose the pressure of Sir Ket early it seems like that's the factor that holds the team fight together. That's that flank position where they're all of a sudden thinking, we have to back off because we don't know where Sir Ket is. But if they're able to shut down Bobat early, you just have Rum, Giannis, and a little bit of support from Bacchus. But I feel like that's pretty easy to deal with when you're on TSM. So look for Bobat yeah. to take off this game. Well, it's it's one of those things, right? Because as the laning phase breaks, I think you're absolutely right. Look for about that 8 to 12 minute mark for where the fights are going to break out. And at the Gold Fury is going to be a good place to look for them, of course. But... Thinking about it, I mean, Rom, very hard to take a Gold Fury against Rom. Uh, yeah. out, of the, out of the dual lane, he can ult when he sees the enemy hunter leave the lane and see if they're there. So they may have to find the pick onto Rom, but, or they're going to get scout, scouted out, uh, less the wards. And it really comes out of coast. Can they find a pick in that yeah. seven to nine minute range? Get an important kill there and be able to take the Gold Fury of their own, that first Gold Fury of the game. If not, they're going to have a really hard time aggressing into TSM unless Giannis is snowballed at that point sure. and has his pen boots plus probably an early damage item uh, instead of the Warlock Sash. Maybe if he picks up a Bancroft Talent or something, they may be able to really fight at that point. Sure. But he's likely to go for the Warlocks to look for that 20 minute timing. Uh, all things told, it's 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 very, very pick-reliant from Coast. Well, it's up against Lobster's Agni in the mid lane there, so we'll see if that makes a difference. He hasn't played this character consistently like he used to early on um, in the year, so uh, a little bit more different from him. He likes to mix it up, but, you know, we're also going to have the rotation from Gab there. The Gab on the side of TSM is going to make a big difference, especially with, you know, uh, ultimates like Sir Ket's explode if they end up dying. The shield will yeah. prevent it, and, of course, preventing that from spreading there. Um, again, uh, eyes on uh, Nemesis. It seems like this early 15-minute stretch is going to be 100% reliant on... Which 
which jungler performs better here because the lineup they have, right? Jungkwe is not highly mobile. He doesn't really rotate all that often. Um, Ogni can rotate, but we'll see how it works out for them. But, you know, it's going to come down to junglers. But speaking of players, let's cover the teams here. On the, on the screen is Team Solo mid, the bottom side of the map, defending the Titan of Order. We have Game Hunter, the solo lane. Cubo Fred in the jungle. Lobster taking that mid roll. Smek in the hunter roll. And, of course, Trix Tank on Guardian. Their opponents today fighting out of the red side of the map, top side of the mini-map, right side of your spectator UI, and defending that Titan of Chaos. It is Coast, no longer Coast Blue, just Coast. A variety in the solo lane as Chong'a. Ninja Bobat will be your jungler as Sir Ket Carino in the mid lane as Giannis. Shaggy Shank, the hunter, pairing up with Princess Tomato as Bacchus, and Shaggy will be the ROM. And we are underway, ladies and gentlemen, as the game starts. This is game number two in the final game out of Europe here on this week number two final day. Minute left before the zero mark is crossed and the minions start spawning up. And of course, 10 seconds after that, the jungle camps will be alive and free to be taken here. Variety is going to be starting here with a lost artifact. I would imagine it's going to be going straight into a Kronos pendant, just getting early cold cooldown reductions to get more abilities out more often. Of course, increasing the amount of healing that Chunga can do. Chunga's limitation is, of course, the fact that you have a circle based, you know, melee range heal versus Ra, who can play it down, versus Aphrodite, who can heal someone just because she is link to them and not even know where they are or even care. Uh, so Chaga really has to be more position oriented and also cooldown reliant uh, in the way that she heals her teammates. But it does help out a lot. Princess Tomato going for a single ward here. We do have a ward being placed down up by their blue buff, surprisingly enough. Mm. Uh, looks like he, he bought one ward. I want to make sure they're not ward. getting invaded. Right, because as that strat happens where you, you start at the mid camps on the chaos side on this left side here and then uh, potentially go and, and take that slow rotation to the blue. I think they just wanted to make sure that that's not going to mm. get spotted out, especially if they want to have that Bacchus helping out at the mid camps. If Geb and Onher decide to come up the side and take it, it I think it's just safe. And, and take a look at Rom here. Uh, has not loaded out with any mana, so they just need to make sure that he is able to secure that. You know what I think it is? Trick's Tank almost every game steals the back Harpies and pokes the red. And so this is probably just to see the rotation okay. from the lane to see if he goes there, because you know, you're exactly right. I mean, Bacchus Rom versus Geb on her. Geb on her definitely have a higher chance of stealing it away, because they have the Impale, they have the Shockwave, whereas Bacchus has maybe a Belly Flop if he didn't go Chug first, and then Rom is just auto-attacking. So sure. they don't really have okay. good secure That's on the blue buff, too. so they can definitely go back and steal it. But I think it's just going to just be there to spot out the rotation from Trickstang and see where he goes. There's the hog being used from Trickstang, forcing him back away from the way, so of course, will be on cooldown for now. Corio taking some damage in the mid lane here as a Path of Flames from Lobster was not prevented by the portal. A little bit late to the lane on the right side, though, Bart. Kibo, Fred, and Game Hunter coming in late to the party. Didn't even bring any drinks, and Variety and Ninja Bobet are going to put them in the corner. Yeah, this is uh, one of the... the Probably the scariest moments in the game is when you're playing on the order side and you're coming into the solo lane uh, after taking the blue buff. Unless you go for that, that what we'll call now the Team Dignitas style start, where you, you three-man uh, both the blue and the mid camp, this can be pretty dangerous. And uh, Bobat actually is going to have a decent angle here to Game Hunter. And they can get some decent damage on a Fred here. Fred actually is going to fall, it looks like. No! Uh, just barely missing. Bobat over the top will be able to secure that kill. And the first one goes on Ninja Bobat, and that's maybe the start that he has been looking for here as uh, he's going to snowball huge. quite nicely off this, and he can look to go steal either a back camp or make his way all the way across to the speed camp and contest that. We'll see what does go out here. Looks like Bobat is thinking back camps here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he will not Honestly, cut a cut. Honestly, if I were Bobat, I would just go straight movement speed. I, you got to know uh, he was going to go over there and take it. It's the safest road. He can't go back over to the soul lane at this point. And so I would just go over and contest it, call over my buddy Corneo in the mid lane, and just say, hey, let's take away the movement speed. Buff. I was going to go over there and try to do the same thing, but a little bit late to the party here. Yeah, Giannis, such good rotations. Right? I mean, that's the chance. I mean, you get that early kill, and this is the problem, right? You can't feed a Sir Cat early because oh, she's going to keep getting better Princess and better. Tomato. Princess Tomato, I mean, actually be in time here. Orange buff getting fairly low. Fred does not have he's already used the hog but no Princess Tomato not spotting it out early enough. He sees him there but starts running away and uh, is unable to belly flop over the wall in time and his hog likely would have been back up now from its early use so a little bit unfortunate there from Princess Tomato. Had an opportunity to steal unable to get it but they still get Circuit off to a great start. Well Kiva had already hogged it so he could have even stolen away with a belch of the gods or a belly flop or something over yeah. the wall so that was definitely an opportunity but of course it's hard to make that judgment without knowing exactly where everyone is on the map but he did have of course in the lane Shaggy Shank to say hey both members are still here. Trixen and Smecker have not left the lane yet, and so you can get to that, but it's a judgment call saying, is it worth it? We got first blood. Let's not get a little bit too frisky here. And then we're going to see this crossover to the 2 minute and 40 second mark. The mid camps will be coming up in just about 35 seconds or so, so look for those to come back up. You can see Kibo Fred already preparing to do the uh, mid camp dance of death. He's going to head on home, <laughs> heal up, get as healthy as he possibly can, and then come back over the mid camps. But one thing to note before we go to the mid camps, Kibo is still level 4. 
Yeah, that's ugly. But I mean, you so definitely want to have the ultimate. So does Bobat, but Bobat, after taking the red buff, should be uh, getting up with uh, this level experience five. that he's sharing in the mid lane here. It is indeed level 5. The red buff actually was picked up by Bobat here, which is a very, very different strategy than what we've seen before. Uh, and and Carino did not split the XP with him either, so that will, in theory, set back Carino just a bit, but give Bobat a bit more gank potential here off of these mid-camps respawn, and it looks like they're going to be split. Left side going to coast, right side going... I'm sorry, going to, not coast, of course, they're no longer playing. Uh, yeah, they are. I'm, I'm crazy. Going to coast and left side going to TSM. <laughs> uh, my mind is, is moving me here. Sold up Boba for some way. Jumping over the wall. It's going to be interesting. Look for the kill. Desert Fear not going to come out here. Ultimate coming out from Yonas, just preventing that death. Princess Tomato is in a terrible spot. Belly flopping away from that one. Portal is still activated. Trickstank looking to force out the fight here on Shaggy Shank, but that was a perfect disengage from coast. TSM knocking Princess Tomato into the wall. Belly flop should come up shortly. Does he have an ultimate available? It looks like he does indeed. Not going to pop it in time, though. Flame Wave will finish him off there. There goes the second blood, but in the meantime, yeah, Game, Game Hunter. Hunter solos out. Chonga played by Variety. That's a good win. Yeah, just took his moment there. Uh, beads used to avoid that ultimate from Chonga uh, that was thrown out, and, you know, Variety just at that point realized that he was too deep, tried to escape, and was unable to do so. So TSM finding themselves a couple of quick kills, and Lobster getting involved with one over on the left side there, helping him out quite a bit as Carino still hasn't really found any rotations. And getting out rotated by Agni when you're Giannis is really not something that you would expect to see. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's hard. Um, it, it really is, because the damage and protection you, you expect to have kind of blows it out. And I think a lot of players in the beginning of the game think that, you know, I, I just, you know, it looks like I have it. You know, you see the HP bar, you think the damage you have, and, you know, it's hard to know what the plan of the player is. I mean, they they may be acting like they're in a corner, but they have a perfect plan on what am I going to counter? He's going to pop the ultimate chunk out, I'm going to beat it. And then I'm going to pop my ultimate, I get the slow off, and make sure that the slow ticks as long as it can to keep him in position. You hit him with a couple times, get the ultimate, or the hit with exorcism, and then stun him out. And a lot of times you expect him to be a lot less responsive. Uh, movement speed buff will be picked up here by Bobat. The blue buff will be picked up shortly here. Across the way, Game Hunter has picked up his own blue buff. Looks like that was in absence of Cubo. Uh, no, Cubo was actually able to assist with that one. The lobster going to be heading home. What is he going to buy here? Boots two, beads two, a multi potion and two wards. <laughs> yeah, you know the the two wards going to be very nice for lobster. That's uh, definitely a style of mid lane that's become more and more popular. Is this this super duper safe where you're you're buying wards and you're just farming up? But lobster already with the rotation as we mentioned a bit earlier, going to uh, get himself going fairly well. Smack, let's take a look with him. Sixteen hundred gold here, getting close to being able to finish off that transcendence and uh, likely to be the build he'll be going for here as well as as he could have had his heart here some time ago. And this is his standard build. It's this uh, transcendence into boots into devs gloves usually. Sometimes skipping the boots and going straight into the devs gloves. Just a, a big flat power style on him. You know, it, it seems like it's really strong, but it just hasn't been effective to date, uh, judging by their, well, win-loss ratio. Well, I mean, it was incredibly effective last time we saw him play. I mean, Spec finishing the Transcendence, and then the second he finished his boots for Pen, his Impale was doing 380, 400 damage, and his in-hands were doing like 130. He was actually hitting very, very hard. Uh, we saw that actually two days ago, and, and especially up against Mortality, we saw Smek actually activate very heavily with that Transcendence on her. Uh, he actually didn't play on her the last time we watched him play. So Diving again on the right side here is Game Hunter. This time, though, it's Variety getting the better of it. Nice job there, evading the exposed evil with the number two. So he wasn't actually, uh, he actually missed a few of those dot ticks and it just wasn't enough to go in there and find the kill. And uh, well, Game Hunter feeds one right back to Variety. You know, it's hard to dive at Chang'e. She has immunity, she has a heal. Uh, Madness coming out from Ninja Bobat looking for the hit, not gonna find it, no Deathbane used there. Uh, he's gonna dash back towards his tower. The poison is still ticking from that uh, Madness shot out. Madness, of course, the name of the CC that we decided to call it. Um, they're gonna push it up there. The back camps will be spawning shortly. Movement speed is going to be taken here by Fred. No invasion attempt from anyone just yet. All tied up two to two here. We do have a slight, ever so slight gold lead for Coast. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, just to explain a little bit there about what Driver was saying about Madness. Madness is basically uh, charm, uh, is a charm mechanic where it will force you to fight the closest target to you that is valid. So if Sir Ket is the closest target in range, you will attempt to fight her. If you have friendly gods nearby, you will attempt to fight them. You just basically go and fight the nearest god to you. Yeah. Uh, it is somewhere between a charm and a taunt, but known as Madness here in Smite. Uh, in the dual lane here, though, on her looking pretty good for Smeg. Trick Tank is actually has a great angle here onto Shaggy Shank. Going to find the knockup, and, and well, the support on the other side Ooh. of Coast and Princess Tomato nowhere to be seen. But between the two of them here, you have uh, two very, very, very strong players. And well, Trick Tank sitting at 1.1 KDA, slightly ahead of Princess Tomato's one overall. Win loss rate, of course, in their advantage. Princess Tomato about 30 GPM behind as well here as in the right lane. 
Zhang Kuei is actually going to try to turn this one around now, but his ultimate just used to force them back. Will be A-OK. -okay. Frank going to maybe try to chase this one down, but a little too late on that rotation, and they will be A-OK. -okay. It's rough to be a support when you're on the losing team. I mean, 17% win percent there for Coast, and your support means that you are almost always become sacrificial lamb, but Smek and Trump on left side, Belly Pop's gonna knock him up, like the Toxic and the Fight is a Fury. Turning on Shaggy Shank, needs to jump away if he can, over the wall he goes, support from Trickset comes out, Rum ultimate should not be able to secure anything here, ultimate coming out, gonna completely miss with Corneo, Corneo's in the fight, there's the shotgun blast, needs a portal or something, the threshold will slow him down, but the body block from Trickset keeps him alive! Beautiful play there, but of course, it's unfortunate that Corneo can actually travel through walls. Yeah. Trickset getting stunned here, good ultimate from Trickset popping in, into that rollout form. Sir Ketz get the madness, gonna grab the death pain right on top. Ultimate not gonna be used there just yet. Bombs coming out from the lobster. Path of Flames comes out. Flame wave gonna come through as well as Cube Basic attack should do it. Lobster killing out boat back. Play Beautiful play. play. Yeah, just great use of abilities there by Lobster. Realizes the second bombs gets H just out. Waits for the knockup and Flame dashes through it. The knockup comes while she is standing over that Path of Flames and it just dots her down. Uh, flame wave as well, going to apply the dot because his passive was stacked up. So Lobster with great presence of mind. In the meantime, that Carino play was just nasty, uh, going through the wall there to pick up that kill with a hit hand. And, well, I think a little bit of that comes down to just misplay by Smack. He could have tried to bail out of there, eating the ROM shots with the Geb shield. He would have been fine, but decided to turn and fight instead, and uh, waited too long, and Carino rotated from the mid easy peasy and found the kill onto him. So uh, a, a misplay there by Smack certainly uh, results in a death. Yeah, a little rough. A little rough on that last hit there, and it, it, you know it's something you expect uh, it, so he had a position, right? And, and the downside is that he thought that it was just going to be him, um, uh, Shaggy Shank, and of course Princess Tomato. The problem is that you have to keep in mind that there's, there's going to be, you know, near global abilities like the ultimate from Corneo. You know, you're thinking, okay, I can disengage. I got a pillar. And it was a beautiful block from Trick Tank. He just got in between that hole of the wall and the obelisk and blocked him from chasing. But of course, Corneo's rotation is what ended the life of Smek. So rough to see that happen. But Transcendence is done off the back of that. So we're going to start stacking that up shortly here. We do see Kiro Fred is keeping up his pace in farm. He has the heavy mace completed, going for Jotun's shortly here. And of course, that double pen uh, item is going to allow him to do a lot more damage than is expected. A lot across the way, Ninja Bobat looks like he's going right into crit. Princess Tomato here, uh, throwing out some in hands at the Gold Fury, trying to maybe bait some rotations coming out here. He does have a couple wards up, and well, both of them get counter warded right away there by Trix Tank. I'm not sure why he placed two wards, must have been a misclick, but uh, down they both go. So no vision for Coast over here on the left side of the map, at least for the moment. Their only ward. Uh, off of the backside uh, rotation spot here to the left side of the lane out of mid. So Lobster's rotations may get spotted out, but anything else is going to be tough for them to spot. Flies in the mid lane there, trying to get some harassment off on a Corneo. Going to find it, but of course, force to pop Retribution in response. Rotation from Trick's Tank looking to poke this down here. Of course, neither mid camp is close to responding just yet, but Kiba will be heading back to take the movement speed buff and the back harpies, as those are pretty close to responding here. Um, rotation from a solo lane, Variety looking for some damage here, possibly onto Lobster. Again, no mid camps to be seen for the next at least minute and a half, so uh, looks like it's just a possibility of a gank before Gold Fury. Yeah, and we are getting into that point here now where it's uh, we feel like Coast is going to need to find some picks to, to transition out of this stage of the game because TSM decides to start grouping here fairly soon. They will have the advantage in those fights with the Agni plus the Zhang Kuei, but uh, Coast looks like they are wanting to take the fight to TSM and force those groupings by, uh, by floating around this Gold Fury here. Bobat has not been too successful in finding picks at this point in the game. One and one. Uh, has got one kill, but the crit is starting to come online, and he may have a bit more to say about that trick snake. Ooh, Ooh. Barely going to miss there as dashing away is Boba. That could have been ugly. Yeah, definitely. But of course, he did have that double dash available, so he possibly could have gone for it. Uh, maybe even gone for the ultimate, cancel it into a jump, and, and forcing them to disengage entirely. But uh, definitely a good rotation from Trick Stake. It's always good to see a Geb that primes the rollout and then hits the lane with full speed, right? If you're kind of rolling into it at half speed or right when the ability starts, it's not very effective. But if you come in uh, full blast, it really helps to kind of clear that out there. Uh, we're going to see some bombs mid lane clear out the way. Look for the damage of Bobat. Bobat jumping away. You're going to die to the path of flames from Lobster getting way too greedy and gets turned on. Yeah, second time he's going to die to Lobster there, and this could be enough for TSM to go ahead and go into the Gold Fury without the danger of getting that poison spread around to multiple members. They're at least going to be able to play very aggressive over here. Looks like they want to wait for the mid-camp spawn here. Lobster standing there with his arms crossed as that new Agni model, and well, it's, it's Game Hunter in the mid lane here is going to spawn Variety's rotation as well, but they're going to stun out the Chang'e. Not going to get damage from the bomb, but she will take 400 damage, able to heal that up with a quick dance. Now it's Princess Tomato's going to get Dove on here. His ultimate coming out, but the ultimate's also triggered by Game Hunter. Not going to be enough to finish off the Bacchus just yet, but Shaggy Shank may be the one in some trouble. He's actually going to take um. this guy. One, two, Trick Tank, please. Trick Tank's dead. 
but they do pick up a kill on the variety in the meantime. Shaggy Shank, is that going to be enough? Three more ticks to do it. One more. No, he is going to live. Shaggy Shank going to be A-OK -okay for now. And uh, Costa's a nice job holding there as Bobat actually looking to re-engage, but he's sucked out by Lobster with the heads up play. And in the meantime, Smack just finding a lot of farm in the left side there as Rom was forced out. Probably by Game Hunter. He knew that he was going to look for the kill, but he also knew that he was low on HP. So he waited for Shaggy Shank to come back to the ground, threw out the card to hope for the kill, uh, and then immediately disengaged. And he was like, you know, if I don't get it, I don't get it. It's not worth my life I'm trying to commit to this, especially since Shaggy Shank's going to be able to dash back towards his tower. That's exactly what happened there. Uh, look at the itemization. We see Variety has gone for a Void Stone early on here. A lot of magical protection and, of course, yeah. the aura, which will... You're right. Look across the people. way at Game Hunter as well, Dry Bear. Same thing. Where he's actually elected to not finish off his Warlock Sash, noting that there is the Void Stone coming out from Variety. It kind of forces him into a Void Stone of his own, and so he has started itemizing in that direction. Yeah, and of course, it, you know, it means that it's, it's flat pen, right? So that aura that comes out is not, I mean, it's 15 reduction, so it's not a whole lot. So if he buys one magical protection item, he's good to go. But it also helps him, right? Because you're going to have Lobster next to you behind your back. If the aura on Game Hunter is going to make a big difference if they're both in the fight. Of course, if you're John Quay, you're going to be in melee range anyway. And so you're going to be at that at that level where the Void Stone aura is going to be on top. Um, plus, I mean, it's 55 feet. That is a really big aura. Yeah, it's uh, basically just under attack range and, and right at most leaps. Yep. It is a large aura. Pretty big aura. Don't have to be all that close, but you have to be at least within visible range of them. Go for going to get warded up here by Trick's Tank. Six, um, as, uh, six towers still remaining on both sides. By the fours, the kill mark right now, and 14 and a half minutes into the game we are. No gold tree even attempts have been started up just yet. Uh, generally, we do see them around the 8 to 12 minute mark. We're at 14 minutes now, and no one has tried. We're looking for a forced fight here on Shaggy. He's going to be able to roll through this, I would imagine, pumping him forward. Trick's Tank looking for the shockwave, going to find it. Possibly an ultimate as well. They're coming pretty hard to this game. Interrupt him again. Look at the Desperate, going to find it, but miss all but two. The shell by his time. Prince is out of the fight. Here comes Kibo Fred posting the ultimate on Corio. Corio can teleport through walls though. Bobat's in the fight. Missing both madness shots there. Preventing the initiation or counter initiation in this situation. Now going for the Cold Fury. Knowing that Prince is low. Knowing that Lobster's looking for a kill on the right side. Bobat might be jumping out and Path of Flames coming out there to prevent the initiation. Now damage going down on top of Prince of Melo. Belgian God's coming out there and Kibo Fred forcing him to double dash away. Corio's in a damaged position here. Can he actually turn right back around on Trick's tank? Kibo Fred looking for some kind of pump but Coast is backing off very smartly. They realize that if they can stay at arm's length, they won't be able to do Gold Fury. Yeah, that's right. That well, But that, that lull there in the action a uh, bit before that was, was very, very good for Coast. I mean, if the game stalls out, it's in their favor. But as you can see here, TSM is just has such an advantage in these 5v5 engagements. Princess Tomato as well getting poked out pretty bad now. Gold Fury does go down there, and Coast, you know, they've just put themselves in awkward position, taking a lot of damage. And not farmed any other areas of the map, with also not being able to contend into the Gold Fury all around an awkward play for them, and it loses out on a lot of farm around the map. Plus, they might still give up some kills here. Well, QO Fred getting low. Oh, great shield from Trix Tank there. Up in the air goes the shot. He should have time. The bomb coming down. He's waiting for the shield to fall off here. Great retribution. Oh! But Cardio takes him out with a snipe. And Coast isn't done yet. They're looking to follow up on the top of this one. Looking for a follow up there. There goes the damage coming out from Lobster. Huge too damage much. from Game Hunter as well. Princess Tomato going down on top of it. It's way too much damage to deal with. Cardio forced into a wall here. Shaggy Chang going to look for the fight, but the impale will come out. Big damage. Smex hitting for 180 right now, way too hard, and Cornio has to get out of the fight. But they thought they had it, but they walked right into death. Yeah, I, I mean, this goes back to all the conversations we've been having the entire game. TSM has the stronger team when they are going head to head. Even on the retreat there, they were like, okay, Agni Bombs came out, and there goes all of your team. Yeah, you know, it's rough, because here's the thing, right? You go right into a big AoE opportunity where you're going to get carded exercised, and then bombed by Ogni. But at and what it's coast? Just, it's, it's way too much. But at what coast? But at what coast? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you love the idea there, right? This whole, like, oh, we picked him off. Let's go, boys. Let's rally. Let's get the rest of these kills. We'll take a fire giant. But then you forget that they have, uh, well, infinite AoE damage between the Zhang Kui and the Ogni. And, and here, once again, second day in a row, we're going to see an Aussie picked up, this time going on to Smek and... This item makes a lot of sense, as we mentioned, going along with just flat power. You can pick up the Aussie on top of your pen boots, a lot of pen, the, the lifesteal you're going to need, and you don't have to go for those Devourer's Gloves. However, what it does not give you is uh, a lot of physical power. In fact, none at all. So the right. Transcendent's going to be doing work for now. And what will Smex fourth item be? Will he go for a second stacking item on top of the Aussie? 
unlikely at this stage, I would say, actually. Should be an Executioner, but he already has the attack. It'll be interesting to see what he goes for. Well, so far, right now, Honor's got a very solid 80 physical power. Um, looks like he's getting about 50 from that Transcendence as it stands up right now. Probably not fully stacked just yet, uh, but of course, actually, I imagine it is. It's just waiting for uh, more mana per level as it does build up here. So he's got a decent amount, 2, 1, and 3. But like I mentioned to me, who's hitting Corneo for 180 damage per shot? That's an incredible amount of damage for in hands, especially this early on in the game. Uh, 18 minutes over. The Gold Fury, of course, was taken by TSM. Big launch up there. They're finally able to get it here, but they're going to clear that out. 3,200 gold and late in 4,600 experience here. But the rotations from mid have been really effective. Lobster able to get in those fights and get some really great single target kills. Corneo got that good ultimate before, but let's check out their stats on screen. Lobster, 0.1 KD higher than Corneo currently, but of course a lot more GPM. 447 to 425, a pretty big gap. Statistically, these teams seem to be very, very tight in terms of yeah. what their KDAs are looking like and where their GPMs are lying. In. Fifth and sixth seed. Yeah, Corneo and Lobster are both very, very strong players, of course. And, well, in, in that last engagement that we saw uh, as Ninja Bobat is uh, in some trouble here, of course, the ultimate Yana's going to come through as well, kind of first of away, but to fall here shortly as the Junkwell continues to take out is Bobat there, does indeed go down. Fight continuing on as Agni rotates in here. Variety could be the one that's in trouble. Bombs coming out, where's one stunning out, and Variety down, he will fall indeed to Lobster's nicely timed rotation. In the meantime, Smek is here, pushing into the mid tower. Cuba Fred is dead to right, so just going to go farm up some minions on the left side, barely making it out of there with his life. But we are going to have the first, I'm sorry, the second tower of the game falling now in favor of Smek. He actually the tier one on the left as well there. So big gold swing for TSM on the back of those two kills. And I do want to go back to that fight where uh, where TSM, or sorry, Coast aggressed so much into TSM at that Gold Fury. Another thing that factors in there heavily is the Spear of the Magus plus the Void Stone in between Lobster and Game Hunter. The Spear of the Magus was instantly stacked up on multiple targets with that, uh, that passive from Agni. Right. And then the Void Stone also reducing their power. It just shows you why they drop so quickly there is, is some very synergistic itemization between the two burst mages. Yeah, we actually surprisingly enough don't see a lot of that, where people are buying items that really synergize well together. Corneo taking a lot of damage here from Lobster. Lobster's showing his stuff as one of the best Agnes in the world. You can really see how much damage he's able to do. These bombs are hitting for 500 damage right now in the game. It can only get worse from there. Uh, he's got a lot of penetration with that spear like you were mentioning. All he has to do is stack up that passive on the spear and then just do tons of AoE damage on top of it. Left side looking for Shaggy Shake here. Ultimate kind of come out, oh, slowing him smack, down. Rotation smack. smack, though. Can they get the impale is the question. Uh, yeah, they, they can. It's smack. <laughs> <laughs> and down he does go. The ultimate did come out for Carino, but there was no one really in position to try to follow that, that one up. That in-hand did 265 damage. Smack, though. Jesus. Well, he's doing true damage. Yeah, well, it's transcendence on her. It hurts. Well, let's see. Shaggy Shank is sitting on a uh, very not robust 54 physical protection. And then you're looking at, well, let's see, 15 pen from the boots plus an additional 15 from the Aussie. He's sitting on about 15 physical protection. Wow. Dealing with all that flat power that, uh, that Smek does have. And if he picks up an executioner as well, he will be doing true damage. Oh, yeah. That hurts. That just hurts a lot. And so does losing Gold Fury. Uh, Coast is now looking at a possibility of not having defense here on Gold Fury. Good obelisk block there by Spec holding the Gold Fury in place and making sure no one takes damage from it. Uh, showing off the power that on her can be seen here. Actually, the first time we've actually seen the uh, the obelisk block on Gold Fury using competitive play was the first time we saw Dintas go two-man middle. And it was a very effective strategy. They ran on her mid, and then at about five minutes, they ran and on her blocked the Gold Fury and killed it off. This was about a year ago, if I recall correctly. Oh, two but, years ago. Oh man, long it was a long time, time ago. That was, those were many moons ago uh, when we first saw that strat. Um, also, Game Hunter here notably has finished off his Ethereal Staff in place of the Warlock Sash. Uh, makes sense considering that he did delay it for the Void Stone, and that item has been more and more popular here. Probably the most popular kind of new item here in week number two. John Quinn on the right side pushing this tower. Going to back up slightly. He does see variety on his way over. Um, gonna try and hopefully hold this down. Bobat in the jungle, looking to defend the mid there. Oh, and issues from Trixie. Looking for the follow-up of Corneo. Corneo forced back here. Popping his ultimate, knocked up by Trixie through the portal. He can't make it. He was blocking it, barely get through. Damage on Lobster in the backside. Digibet will slow him down here. Trixie trying to disengage. Going up in the air is going to be Shaggy Shank. Looking for the shot onto Kubo, Fred, or in the backlight. Actually looking for Game Hunter here. Gonna do a little bit of damage there. Needed one more ghost. One more ghost takes on Princess Tomato. Now looking for Trigger Stake. He's got the shield up. Shield will be ready for Kubo, Fred as well. Variety does have an ultimate. He does indeed, but does not want to go for the fight here. It turns out to be a two for one exchange support for a mid and a hunter. That's a bad look for TSM. Yeah, really important though that TSM did pick up a kill onto the Guardian there, considering they were losing that fight. Um, because if not, Coast would have been able to pick up a Fire Giant here, most likely with that Game Hunter ultimate down. And 
speaking of the Game Hunter here, he is looking pretty nice at 4-1-6 and six and putting out 15,000 player damage at this point in the game, leading all players. Freak Tank heading home here. He knows he has to be healthy for the possibility of a Fire Giant initiation. Game Hunter is going to be holding down the transition between mid and Fire Giant. Going to go back and pick up these Harpies, I would imagine. The full wave going to the mid lane. Fire Giant looks like it is on the minds of Coast. Rotation from TSM may slow it down. Cornea is popping a portal through the wall, trying to force them to come over and poke in on the FGE, but they realize that they just don't have the secure power without Princess Tomato, although he is back. Back, but everyone on TSM has successfully come back to life and are walking among the living here as they run back over to the Fire Giant area to ward it up. Counter ward come out from Trick's Tank. It looks like they have vision control of the FG now, but the question is how long can they hold on to it and will Coast even try to stop it? Well, and, and, and part of the issue here is the uh, is the fact that Lobster's Rod to Hootie is going to be online, which means that if he has three bombs coming into a Fire Giant that Coast is going for, he could very likely pick off two or three targets. Uh, any, anybody that's basically not Princess Tomato or maybe Variety at this point will likely fall if they are too grouped up when those bobs, those bombs do come through. Well, the Soul Landers have been doing a good job of holding on to this game. Game Hunter able to get that Princess Tomato kill at the last fight uh, right before the Fire Giant. So you can see him there on screen, 2.8 KDA and 471 GPM across the way. Variety much, much less, 1.1 KDA and 425 GPM. Of course, a lot of Game Hunter stats have come in this week. That Loki play had earlier against Mortality at the start of the week, taking down the undefeated Mortality was a great play from him. And of course, going through the week, he's been performing to a high, much higher level than we saw him last week, uh, currently sitting four. 1 and 6 is a good day for fantasy owners if you do own Game Hunter. It's also worth pointing out here as we were talking about Smex build with the Aussie and the pen boots giving him 30 pen there is that his passive's also giving him pen. Right. To the tune of about another yep. 15. So he was doing damn near true damage already and, and now uh, with the Rage Blade coming online. Doesn't give him any more pen but does give him the crits which is uh, just as good at this point. Uh, he's going to be hitting very very hard Will Smex and, and especially against objectives here where he has quite a bit of pen. If he picks up uh, the Deathbringer into a Titan's Bane he is going to be a force to be reckoned with, certainly, in the later stages of the game. Carino going to have that Nemesis Ultimate coming out. Trick's Tank and Lobster not going to re-engage. However, Bobat, with his Magi's Blessing, feeling a little bit more powerful, is trying to kind of pick at the edges of TSM as they continue to hold a strong position on the right side of the map. Well, Shaggy Chain's in the mid lane here, looking to possibly pick off any stragglers, but it's not looking like it's a good shot here. TSM looking like they might be initiated on by Ghost. Good shield from Geb, slowly stepping into this team fight with a lot of caution is both teams. Oh, blinking in, gonna find three. Forcing them back to purification beats there on Ninja Bobat. Corny gonna dash away as well through the wall he goes. The life off comes from Princess Can they stop him before the ultimate comes out? Looks like they cannot. Smek is the kill, and now we're looking for Corneo. Big crits coming out from Smek, doing a lot of damage here. Up there goes Rom. Shaggy Shaggy is the kill here onto Smek. They know the damage must be coming out shortly here. This shot goes through the wall, but still kills Smek. Smek going down. Bombs and Lobster will kill off Shaggy Shaggy. Now looking for Variety. Variety oh, getting slowed by the card. Shockwave comes out. Variety goes down. Now it's Bobat all alone in the darkness of his own world. Good man is forcing him out of the fight here. Actually getting an attack. Tricks saying instead of Bobat this time, not taking tower shots because of it. But the Fire Giant is exposed here. It's four versus one. Bobat forced to jump away. Slice and dice might do it. Each time gets by some time. Keep right tilt taking tower shots, but he should be A-OK. -okay. And indeed he will. Bobat going down means it's a guaranteed fire. It is, and, and Variety in that fight that Chang'a did have Winged Blade finish, but you still see how effective the slows were against him. It only is able to pop every so often. Fire Giant getting in a kill threshold, and down indeed it will go. Trix Tank barely surviving that one. If another Lava would have come out, he would have been in, uh, well, he would have been a dead robot. But for now, he is going to have that Fire Giant buff, as will the rest of TSM, less smack. But that's okay, he has plenty of physical power at this point anyway. He's going to be up in about five seconds, and now this is where it gets very ugly for Coast. TSM's going to start picking off the remainder of these Tier 2s. Uh, well, there's only three of them remaining. One tower down inside of TSM, three towers down on the side of Coast, and it really starts to mean business when you take down Tier 2s. Tier 1s, for those of you who don't know, are worth 500 gold net worth to the enemy team, which means it's 100 gold per person. Tier 2s are worth 1,500 gold, three times the amount, which of course would be uh, 300 per person. Effectively, a gold fury per Tier 2 tower. It's a lot of gold and a lot of gain for the team that takes down those Tier 2s. So, the Tier 1's not really worth all that much, but it gives you map control. The Tier 2s are worth map control and also a ton of gold. Look at the animation here. You see Variety actually going for a winged blade, avoiding all the slows they have on the side of TSM. Uh, Ethereal Staff picked up from Game Hunter. Looks like he doesn't want to stack up a late game. Warlock's actually going to finish that one off, but here comes the push on the left side. 
Yep, TSN is going to try to aggress in here. Trick Tank does get the backstab on the Shaggy Shake, putting him into a very compromised position. Then the ultimate coming out, and boom goes the diamond as he goes down to the knockup. Trick Tank doing a tremendous amount of damage there to the Shank. And now, well, with the tier two down, I'm not sure uh, what they'll do. You, you see in the mid lane, Zhang Kuei is pushing in on as Game Hunter and, and Ninja Bobat. There's nothing he can do about this, quite literally. And yes, it looks like TSN will aggress on the Phoenix on the opposite side of the Fire Giant, as we have come to expect. Cubo Fred with the Titan's Bane leading the charge. On that Titan, they need to just make sure he's throwing in in hands with Smack there, and they'll be able to take down this Phoenix just like that very, very, very quickly. Uh, on the side of itemization as well, we do want to point out here that TSM does not have a shell picked up. They've gone with a Blink-1 on to get instead, uh, and it hasn't really been a big factor in this game. So far, the initiates from Trick Tanks have, have outweighed their ability to counter-initiate with that shell, and normally that probably would be going on a Game Hunter B also with the Blink-3 online here has committed to very, Lots very aggressive here. style. They have damage from above. Shaggy Shake's able to come this through. Smek will go down. A, a variety will go down to Smek's shot. That according to the Game Hunter, now this could be a possibility of a game-ending push here for TSM. The time is exposed, swinging those double flaming weapons, but it's a three versus five situation. Fire Giant buff is ticking. TSM looks like they want to back off and go for the right lane push. They felt like that was enough of a win there. We did see Princess Tomato go in there for the initiation, but it was not enough. Variety was just taking way too many shots. And of course, once Variety shot out that ultimate before the fight even began, they knew that that was not a defensive ability they had in their arsenal. They could pile in. And they could just, just pile in and go for it. And now, with only one Phoenix remaining, Coast is going to try to keep TSM out of the base. They do have bubbles up on both Princess Tomato and Ninja Bobat, uh, shredding at least some of the CC, but a timely blink by Game Hunter can get rid of both of those, and the follow-up can come in. No, it's just going to be the ultimate coming in from the support and Trix tank here. Bobat going to get carted out as well. He's forced out of his fight back to the well. Phoenix conceded, and down indeed it will go. That's the last one. No Phoenix is standing here. The Fire Jet won't be up for another three, uh, two and a half minutes or so. About probably more closer to two minutes at this point. So it's a tough, tough situation for a coast. I mean, they're 21 to 8 on the side of TSM. 16,000 gold in favor of TSM. 20,000 experience. Looking at the numbers here, you can see no one on the side of coast is level 20 versus the four level 20s on TSM. This is looking like more of the TSM of old. Just very hyper-aggressive, unrelenting style where they make smart plays and they don't actually get in too deep to expose themselves to a possible turnaround. You saw them actually look for a possible end. Instead, they're like, yep, we're going to back off. We're going to push the right tower. We're going to get the right Phoenix. We're going to back off again, control the map, steal the buffs, and we'll come in fully loaded on the next push and end it right then and there. All of the gold from that last engagement uh, does it up in a lot of items here. Each player had about 2,000 or 3,000 gold of their name from those towers. Smack picks up his Titan's Bane. Uh, Trick's Tank is going to go into a bit more tanky with his Witch Blade being finished up in addition to a Silver Talisman. Magi's Blessing completed for Cubo Fred. Lobster goes straight for the Soul Reaver, and Game Hunter picks up a Rod of Tahuti. And, uh, well, with no really kind of these super steroid magic items in the late game on, well, Variety or Carino, no Rod of Tahuti finish, no Soul Reaver, they do not have anywhere near the burst damage. Their only true kind of late game item here is a Death Ringer coming out on a Bobat, but at this stage, is it going to be enough? Unlikely. No, I mean, it's not. I mean, they're just too far behind. I mean, it, they're literally a full item or two behind their counterparts, and it's just at the point where they have to capitalize on mistakes from TSM. They cannot be the aggressors here. They can't start Fire Giant. They can barely even counter-initiate Fire Giant. They can't be the one. And the other thing is that they're on this constant babysit watch, right? They have all three lanes pushing up. The left Phoenix will be spawning shortly, so they have to make sure that that is nurtured and respond to its full HP because they can't have any of these lanes being weak for too much longer. It just is too much of a detriment to they have no control of the map, and they have to constantly come back to base, whereas they want to fight. But even then, even if they fought without the Fire Giant buff, they don't have the same level of golden experience to fight on even footing. Yeah, they, they'll need a wipe. Uh, at this point, Coast needs to win probably three, maybe four team fights to win the game. Um, and if they lose one, they're going to they're gonna give this one up. And, and will they make their last stand here at the Fire Giant? Uh, they're making their way down with the Fire Giant is melting already at 50% HP. Princess Mado basically has to go in right now, and he's not going to make it there in time. And now Carino getting blown up by the Agni Bombs, doing so much damage. Lobster in some trouble, though. He might fall. Get Ultimate coming out. Is he going to make enough space for Lobster? He's just throwing bombs out on top of himself. He does go down to Princess Mado, but everybody is so low now. In the back lines, it's really just Bobat still alive for the team. Not really just. It is actually that. One, two in hands, and Cuba Fred dashing through as well. Double kill for Fred and a DSI coming out for Team Solo mid. A Phoenix does respawn, but TSM going to go ahead and pile right on into the base. Leading the charge there is the Geb. Phoenix is coming back online shortly, but it shouldn't matter. Uh, Fire Giant already, I'm sorry, Chaos Titan already taking about 50% of his HP as Trick Tank rolls in. Game Hunter is here at, at full HP and mana with, well, a Rod of Tahuti, Spear of the Magus. Down will go the Titan of Chaos, and Team Solo mid will find their victory. And they did.
They found it, and this is exactly what you would like to see from TSM if you're a fan in Coast. This is a really, really hard loss for them. I mean, they're in yeah. last place, one and five. They just now moved one to six. one and six. Yeah. That is a really, really hard place to be. And now, of course, across the way in North America, you've got Thirst at one and four, and Fat Chunk at one and five. So they're definitely not the alone in that world. But one and six is really hard. And look at the loss here: twenty-six, nine, and sixty-two is the score here for TSM, and nine, one, and twelve on Game Hunter with that John Quay. Another good game Not for his him. typical character, but he dominated this match. Actually, one of his strongest performances. Looking at the slash line there and his statistics coming out, and the build was. Uh Really, really strong as well for the God Hunter here. And, and well, you know, his inconsistent play is starting to level out, it looks like here. He, he struggled a little bit the first three weeks, only right. had one good game out of three. But now, moving into this game, he's looking pretty dang good at 9-1-12. and 12. In fact, let's take a look at a double kill that he picks up in the midst of one of these late-game team fights. Well, it, you know, it's hard, right? Because he, you try to focus him, you can't. You try to get away from him, you can't. He's got a great slow. Watch how he utilizes the exposed evil uh, to slow them down and actually try to get the initiation. Obviously, Bobak kind of rotate over. Card on top of Shagshin. He lets it tick. He just lets it kind of tick down, poke him away, wait for him to just commit to the fight. He's very cautious, very careful, and he's thinking through every step. Once the blink comes in, he commits this fight. He's going to pop the ultimate pretty shortly here. There goes the ultimate popping up. Looking for the stun as well. Chunk, there goes chunk, the damage. Actually, going to come out right behind him. There goes the hit. The ghost gets that shot. Now, look for the kill on Corneo. Big, big damage. The card on top. While he's Egypt, that should finish him off here. Indeed, it will. There goes the kill on Corneo. Squizzy will so very strong there. Svek will fall the Shaggy Shank, but he commits this fight again in the back. Looking for the card over the wall. Gonna find it. Exorcism should be enough to finish it off. Indeed, it will. Game Hunter with a double kill. But you can see that they can't focus him. Yeah. They can't get away from him. That's the power of Junk Way. Yeah, and, and even in that fight, Changa did have the Adventures. I'm sorry, the uh, Winged Blade finished right. off and was immune to slows every 30 seconds. And Oh, the patience for Game Hunter there. Finds the second card and the kill. Actually, two kills with cards through walls there in that engagement. Great anticipation from the Game Hunter. That's going to do it for Europe, guys. We have two more games today here on this uh, final day of week number two in the Smite Pro League. Coming up next, out of North America, Cognitive playing in both games. First up, Cognitive Red up against Thirst, followed by Cognitive Prime up against Snipe. Guys, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with the North American version here on our wonderful Sunday at the end of week two. For Dry Bear, I'm Hi-Rez Barton. We'll see you guys at the top of the hour for our next game out of North America.